I've already mounted the stock into the vise on the bridge port, and I'm going to show you here in a minute what my thought process was on doing that. Um, this is all kind of odd shaped, and the the brake is sort of an odd brake, so I'm, I had to mount this in a way that the the drills would sort of be perpendicular or straight down into the stock, going down through the widest part of the of the. Uh, the brake itself, and I'll show you that here, like I said, in a second. So, my first concern was to get the stock as vertical as I could so that when the drill went down through, it was going down perp perpendicular to earth, but but actually in line or or perpendicular to the receiver or to the inletting itself. So I had to figure out, you know, how to do that. The only thing that I can rely on is I can rely on this inletting, this surface of the inletting to be to be flat or to be level. So what I did was I put in this this piece of pine that I'd made years ago and it fits in there nearly perfectly and made sure it was down flat against that inletting and took a level placed the level on it and then put the bubble in the center of the two lines and then by by loosening the vise and rotating the entire stock in small amounts as I was tightening it up, got that so that it was between the bubble was between between the lines. Now, for the purposes of drilling this, as long as the pins can get down in there relatively square to the stock itself, we're going to be just fine. Remember, these are these are not critical to the function of the gun. It's just how do we get that small piece attached? The other reference that I needed was I wanted to be square to the to the brake and not square to the to the inletting. So I put the same square right bridging that brake itself and the same thing I just kept working the um, the stock until that bubble was something near near level, something near flat. As long as I don't move the stock as I'm going through the work, uh, it's going to repeat itself and things are going to things are going to be just fine. All right, let's change the collet and let's install the chuck. The collet's held in by this threaded rod. Turn this out counterclockwise like a regular screw, and, and out comes out comes the collet. We have to size the collet to the shaft on the the chuck. So we'll clamp that chuck into the into the spindle using the collet. So we'll start we'll start pushing that in. All right, when we get towards the end, we want to make sure that that, that collet, or that um, chuck rather, the shaft of the chuck is sort of centered inside that collet. So I like to just grab, grab the collet and just rotate it small amounts as I'm tightening it up. And there's a lock up here that allows me to lock the entire sp spindle. It's actually a brake. Then just talk, tighten it up, spin that a little bit more, tighten it a little more until you can't do it anymore, at which case then we just snug it up. It doesn't have to be overly tightened. We're going to start by using a center drill, and that center drill is it's thicker, it's heavier, it's not going to flex. And the lower part of the center drill is the same size or roughly the same size as the 120 drill. We're going to insert that up into the, the jaws of the friction chuck. Just snug that up. And when we go to drill, the, the thickness of that center drill 
is going to prevent the drill from wandering. So this entire break has a lot of wood striations uh, and it also has a curve and that curve is going to want to deflect the drill. So if we were to start by using the 120 drill because it's so flexible that once it hits that curve it's going to want to bend away from the curve. And then it's also going to get caught into some of those wood fibers. So we're going to start out by using that stiffer center drill. We'll poke in a, a, a small hole that then becomes the guide hole for the, the regular drill. All right, let's get that started. So I've set this up so that the drill is roughly centered between the inside of the inletting and the outside of the stock. So that gives me roughly the equal amount of wood on either side of the hole. Um, again, I'm not sure how much it really matters, but we're going to, we're going to do it that way. Now because I haven't moved anything, I've removed the center drill, the alignment remains the same, I put in the smaller 120 drill, and as long as I don't move the table, the alignment remains as it, as it was, so I can come right back in with the final drill and drill it. Now one of the things that I want to do is I only want to go down about a hundred, about I don't know, quarter inch, 250 thousandths maybe. I don't need this hole to be particularly deep. Um, just deep enough to secure that dowel. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's check and make sure that the dowel fits in the hole that we just drilled, and it does. We're going to move the, the table, and we're going to move it about three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch, we'll see. And that's about as far as I can go without getting too close to the edge of the, to the outside of the wood. And I don't want to move it this way because I'd like the, when I go and drill this smaller piece, I'm going to rely on this surface here as my datum to put those holes in. And I want to make sure that the, um, that I'm not having to make these odd offsets. So we're going to, we're going to move it about, about three quarters of an inch and that'll get us well within the well within the wood and it'll give it that stability that we're looking for so let's go ahead and do that now we have both holes in and we can try and figure out how to get this little piece lined up with those pins. I'm thinking that I'm going to have to drill this one by hand. I'm going to clamp this in a vise and s just see if I can't use I'm probably going to use a Dremel tool. I think that's going to be my best bet. So I think this is going to be more art than precision here. So. I'm going to use my Dremel tool and I have a small carbide uh, ball mill uh, or deburr that I'm going to use and I'm going to try 
going to try to start the the opening in the right location because I want to make sure that I've got enough room because this is going to be more art than precision once I've got this drilled that I can shuffle this around a little bit and then I'll let the epoxy itself form the barrier or the um, or secure that pin in place um, let's give this thing a try That actually looks pretty good. That fits really well, too. Um, so let's try and do the other one, too. Just do a little bit of a relief. And it actually looks really good. So we're going to leave it right there. We'll put both pins in. Check that alignment once more. That does not want to move at all back or forth or left or right. And the alignment seems to be excellent. I like this a lot. All right, we're going to do this right like this. Good. And there's your two relief holes in the bottom of that. Before we glue this up, um, I'm going to go over this again one more time with acetone. Uh, the stocks look really clean, but the oil does have a way of saturating back into the fibers, and it's been about a week since I cleaned this. So I want to go over this again one more time with the acetone to make sure that we've gotten all the oil that may have creeped into this in the last week and make sure that this is as clean as we can get it and as ready as we can to to receive the the epoxy. So while that's flashing off, we're going to mix up that epoxy. It's a two-part epoxy. We've talked about this in previous episodes. It's a 50-50 mix. Rather than using the heavier bodied epoxy, that I use from Brownells. Somebody, one of my viewers asked me that question in a, in a video a while back. Um, I'm not going to use that heavier, that heavier epoxy. Instead, I'm going to, to use this thinner epoxy. And it's a clear epoxy. And that way, it'll flow down into the, into the, um, the hole a little bit better and then get down inside the fibers of the wood a little bit a little bit nicer. I am going to use some powdered pigments and try and turn this slightly uh, tan or brownish color. I'm going to add just a little bit at a time. I don't want to overly stain it. And when we glue this up, it is not going to be a perfect fit. There is going to be somewhat of a gap. And this will help fill in the gap, but it'll also give it more of a wood tone color, which when it comes time to do the final finishing, I'm probably going to have to faux it out. I've done several videos on faux. And this will help make the... Um, the process of coloring, coloring the final finish a little bit easier. So we're just using a powdered pigment. 
Uh, the first thing we're going to do is try and sneak some of that epoxy down inside that hole. Now it's loose enough that it'll start to fall in under its own weight. We'll put a little bit more down in there. Okay. Take a little bit of that epoxy and then begin to smear it down into the into the break itself. make it too thick because I want to be able to squish this part down onto it as well. So I'll pull a little bit of that back off. And then let's go ahead and put the pins in. I mentioned in the last video that the pins are going to want to hydraulic themselves. You don't want to force themselves back out. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that in the in the video, but they want to keep coming back out. And you just keep pumping it until until it stops doing it. And we're going to set this thing up. That looks really nice. So what I'm going to do is use some denatured alcohol to wipe away the squeeze out of the epoxy. Because normally when I do these repairs, I'm doing these repairs to stocks that have finish on them. This one I'm not worried about because it has to be all, all refinished. But at the same time, the least amount of work that I have to do in the future, the better. All right. <clears throat> one of my favorite tools for clamping this stuff on is actually duct tape. I'm able to spread the loads over a broader area. And I like that a lot. I like this a lot. Let's do another, another piece. That is going to look good when it's done. No more nail, epoxy and pins. We're going to like this. Twenty-four hours to cure and I'll see you tomorrow when it does. The epoxy has had twenty-four hours to set, so it's time to pull off the tape and see what we ended up with. This fits nice. 
This is a major milestone in this restoration, getting this little piece attached and to get it to look like it was part of the stock all along. I'm, I'm really happy with this. If you like this video, like, tag, share, follow, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one where we do the next part of this restoration on this 1905 Ithaca double barrel. See you next time.